different faculties, school of law. It's my belief that uh, I'm familiar to each one of you. Only that a very few of you may not know exactly what is going on. I'm the patron of the Human Rights Club, St. Augustine University of Tanzania, but also I'm the patron of uh, Anti-Corruption Club. We are privileged to have uh, members of the legal and the human rights center. Of course, it's not as easy as you may think that the people travel from Dar es Salaam to Mwanza because we have more than 40 universities in Tanzania. But we are privileged to have this opportunity to discuss the role youth can play in the promotion and the protection of human rights in Tanzania. We are doing this ahead of the International Human Rights Day on 10th December every year. It's an International Human Rights Day. So, uh, members of the Human Rights Club, welcome. Non-members as well, this will be an impetus for you to join the club. So we have identified four teams. We have been doing this from last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yesterday, and today, we have the visitors from Dar es Salaam to witness the competition. So, we are going to have a winning team, but again, the best debaters. That's what I'm informed. So the best debaters are the ones who will advance to Dar es Salaam, the best debaters. So we are going to have the best team but again, the best debaters, because we're going to give you marks, will advance to Dar es Salaam for other logistics, as I told you. But Mr. Ali Saif will explain this in detail to know what will take off in Dar es Salaam, for how many days, how. So, uh, Welcome to this occasion. We're not going to spend more than two hours. I think within two hours or three, things will be done. My name is Shukuru Po, so be relaxed. I would advise you that we sit not more than, not more than four in a desk, because we, have, we still have empty seats. No need to squeeze yourself. We can sit at, at least three or four in a desk. Do not squeeze yourself to that extent. Otherwise, let me now invite Mr. Ali and the other team at least to come forward, briefly talk to youth. Mr. Ali Safe is under the Directorate of Empowerment and Accountability. Legal and the Human Rights Center. Ladies, you know, we are so much used to Madam Gertrude, but today we have Ali Saif and the Directorate of uh, Empowerment and Accountability. He will introduce other members from the Legal and the Human Rights Center, Dar es Salaam. Welcome, Mr. Ali Saif. It's my pleasure. Uh, to stand before you uh, another day, another time. And it has not been my first time to be here. Hopeful among of you we have met for more than once, isn't it? Have we ever met before today? Nobody have ever saw me before today. 
Okay. Uh, my name is Ali Saif Ramadhani. I'm a lawyer working with the Legal and Human Rights Center as a youth engagement officer uh, for more than five years and above. I'm working in that field and uh, specifically I'm dealing with uh, youth empowerment to ensure that young people in Tanzania are knowledgeable, motivated and confident on human rights issues. And uh, we, are, we have much focus in learning institutions, including uh, schools and uh, college and universities, being specifically uh, the program of human rights clubs can be found in primary schools, secondary schools, college and university, whereas we have more than 240 human rights clubs in Tanzania. And the human rights club program has been there for more than decades. And me, myself, I am the truly product of Human Rights Club since I was in my secondary school education. Uh, when I furthered my education to university and also where I graduated and uh, being recruited at the Legal and Human Rights Center, I was mandated to do the same thing which I was used to. So today it's my pleasure to welcome you and uh, to give you introductory remark about what we are doing here today. And, uh, I'm happy that your face is saying it all. You seem to be nervous, you seem to be anxious, but you seem to be courageous enough to battle to each other. Uh, it's not a fight as a war, but it's a fight of argument. And uh, we have opted to, to, to come here uh, in the university, St. Augustine, uh, Augustine University, uh, main campus, Mwanza. It's a big privilege to you uh, you, must, you must appreciate that because in Mwanza we have more than, we have more than 10 human rights clubs in primary schools, in secondary schools, and here in university. But to choose university is a privilege because the debate competition or debate challenge has been set to be conducted in four zones. We conduct it uh, uh, in central zone and we have already conducted it in Dodoma but also we conduct it in Lake Zone. We are conducting here in Mwanza, but we are going further to conduct it in Northern Zone. Arusha has been selected as a representative region, but also we'll be going to conduct it in Bagamoyo, representing Eastern Zone. And it is a piloting activity or piloting project for Legal and Human Rights Center, where we envision it to implement it in a coming, or in a, uh, in the coming years, especially in 2022 20, and further. So we are just piloting it, but also it is an interest, uh, interest point for young people to participate in our remarkable uh, organization uh, day, which is a World or Global Day. Normally we do celebrate uh, International Human Rights Day, which is happening or uh, celebrated in every 10th of December every year as an international day. So we at the Legal Human Rights Center, that is our day. And that is the day that we mark the closure of our programs and activity. So in ensuring that uh, we engage, we have a meaningful youth engagement, we decided not to select uh, by bias, by looking at your face and saying that you are enough to, to, to go to the celebration or commemoration of the International Human Rights Day. So we have tried to make it as a competitive chance so that you will feel the value of being there, but also you will feel the value of protecting and promoting human rights. Ultimately, we at LHRC, we will realize our mission of ensuring that young people are knowledgeable, motivated, and confident on human rights issues. That is all. So, my name, as I said, is Alice Ramadani. I will be presiding uh, among the judges uh, of today's de debate challenge. And uh, one of my role was to tell you about that. I am sure enough that you know about Legal and Human Rights Center. And if ever you are not conversant about Legal and Human Rights Center, you may take it from these posters and, uh, uh, and any other place for today. We will, uh, we, will, uh, we will decline from talking much about Legal and Human Rights Center. But, uh, I would like to appreciate that there will be a presence of other judges, including my colleague, brother, and friend, uh, 
Shukuru, who is your lecturer, but also we have another another judge who will join us later. We will be three judges expecting that, but I have been told that we have four debate teams which will be challenged to each other today, which will be challenging to each other today, and we are so excited and we can't wait to hear from them. Uh, but the following are some tips of what we will be doing. Uh, we expect every team is well prepared and we will never interfere any team or team member during your, speak, during your speech. Uh, but we wanted to highlight th this thing so that you can get it on your mind. And the, uh, our assessment criteria are not bias based. We are not biased on our assessment. So we are giving you hints of how will we be assessing you. Our assessment form, uh, which gives us assessment criteria, will have five marks. Whereas one is a normal, two is average, three is good, four is better, but five is excellent. So if you will touch our hearts to the maximum, you will have five. But if you will try to rob around the bush, you will have one. And we never hesitate. You know Mr. Shukuru, he is your lecturer. He can't hesitate to give you one because he used two, I know. But also he can't hesitate to give you five because he used two. Me, I am not a lecturer, but I used it to lecture a lot of time for more than five years in different learning institutions, including primary, secondary, and college universities. So I will never hesitate also to treat you the same way as we treat us with your arguments. So make sure you get more fives than more ones. But what will we consider first will be your confident on publicly speaking. How do you, how do you make it so confident when you are speaking in this audience? But also, your quality, the quality of the articulated argument or point. Is it clear or should we seek for further elaboration? But also, generally, debaters have three major duties. Have three major duties. First duty is the construction duty. So we will assess your construction ability. How do you construct? In fact, in, 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 in courts, we are saying, how do you move the court? The court is there just waiting for you to move it. How do you move the court? How are you constructed enough to make us understand that that is a point? But also, because it is a debate, we will assess how, uh, how are you capable to distract the opponent side. So we will assess your distraction ability, the ability to distract others. But also, we will assess your, compar your comparison ability. Here, in the comparison ability, we are just looking at the relevance of what you are saying. Never live on the sky. Don't tell us about things that are not living. Just give us examples. Just illustrate. How is it possible? How is it happening? So that we can be convinced. So you have to be comparative. Comparative enough well, while you distract, while you construct. But also, we will assess your ability to make time management. Time management, because we'll be giving you a time. Every speaker have five, have five minutes of speaking here, so that we will never interfere with five minutes. But if we interfere our extra after five minutes, that will be part of our assessment. But also, we will assess your flow management. We have the flow here. This is the flow. Uh, you are free to convince everybody here. So the ability to convince that, eh, depending to every person's skills. So we'll assess that, but also we we'll assess the ability to rebuild your case. You have been distracted by the opponent that you have said false. We have this and this and this, so nobody should be convinced to trust this. And when you get here, you should not proceed before you construct your case. So the ability to reconstruct that also is one of the assessment, but also closing remark. When you are going back, how do you leave us? Eh? In Swahili, simple way, unatuachaji. So we are looking at you and you are just saying, thank you. Uh, everybody will say thank you, and that is not a closing remark when you rebut. 
We expect you to give us the standing. Therefore, by all that said, here I am is for wa 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 wa. So all that. So never think that we are coming here to predict. Atu pigi lamli. I will see you. Uh -huh. So after all that, I'm sure you will be doing a great job. Uh, 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 as I said, we're just making it competitive to have a y y meaningful youth participation in our International Human Rights Day, but this is a piloting project. We will be doing it for more and more and more in coming years, so make sure you do it to the best that you are going to Dar es Salaam. You might be a Dar es Salaam dweller, or you might be a Dar es Salaam expert. You are living there, your family is there, you started there, but for this, it's an opportunity that you are going and coming back freely, living uh, accommodated with the other people's costs. And when, even if your home is Dar es Salaam, you might not go at home and saying that I'm here. You're saying, to, I'm here around, where have you slept there, Serena Hotel? Yeah, Serena Hotel, you see? So, I'm just saying, if it's not Serena Hotel, don't come and... So, after that, uh, we will have simple awards that will be uh, given on spot today here for the best three. We have winning team, but we have best speakers. Your team might be a loser, but you might be a best speaker. I used to say the example that even if Manchester United is beaten, but the Cristiano Ronaldo is the best player. So that is it. That is it. So never come here and think that because my team will be winning, I will be going to Dar es Salaam. That is my thing. You must be a best speaker. You must make sure you are best because we find those youth that will be presenting the Tanzania in different international and regional competitions. So we can't make any favor to anybody who is not competent enough. By saying that, I would like to appreciate you most and say that you are most welcome. That is introductory issues. So I will get back the mic to where it belongs for other uh, consideration. Thank you so much. We have four teams and they have been baptized some names. For example, we have Apple team, Embe team, Ukwaju team, and Chungwa team. Each team has three members. Now to start the debate, let me call upon Embe team to come forward, of course, no, Apple, Apple team. The Apple are opposing the motion. Please stand up, march forward, take your position. We have Mr. Providence Simbila, yes, Hamis Yuma, and James Masawe. Thank you so much. Let us clap for them. <laughs> Apple team will debate against Ukwaju team. Ukwaju team will be proposing the motion, supporting the motion. Please stand up. Ukwaju team. Yes, march forward. Members of Ukwaju team, we have Carla Frank, Haman Liamba, Eric McLeod. Take your position. Yes, yesterday we, yesterday we had, we, we, we had an official team. We are the chairman for yesterday, please stand up so we can be known to, to the visitors from Dar Islam and the students. Please let us clap for him. <laughs> he played such a great role yesterday. And we thought according to logistics, if he may be involved, but I'm told, 
that we need to have impartial judges. Now your role will be identified later, but thank you so much. We recognize your presence. Right now, let me call the motion mover. Motion mover, Jasmine. <laughs> you are see the motion mover, right? Yeah, just stand up, but we'll come much later. Timekeeper, Elizabeth. Timekeeper, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Akapwani Jasmine Kavenuke. Uh, first of all, just to welcome you all to this event and to welcome our guest of honors, the Legal and Human Rights Center. Welcome to the Human Rights Saudi Club. And hopefully after today, we shall have many, many, many new members. So we're looking forward to that. Um, the theme for this year's uh, debate is, as you can see, youth have minimal role in human rights promotion and protection in Tanzania. So as you can see, many of us here are youths, and the, the topic is really interesting. We're hoping that we'll get different views from the audience as well. So basically, we just want to know whether, as you can see, the proposing and opposing sides, proposers are saying, yes, they do have a minimal role in human rights promotion and protection in Tanzania, whilst the opposers are saying, no, they do not have a minimal role in human rights promotion and protection in Tanzania, and their points shall be explained herein after. So this is the theme, and of course it's interesting to know who exactly are youths, and I would have liked our guest of honor to give at least an explanation of who exactly the League of Human Rights Center, who do they see as youths. So thank you so much, we hope you enjoy. I'll leave it up to the guest of honor to continue, and Mr. Shkuru will continue from there. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, debate mover, but also thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I am. I have been invited to explain or to give a plausible explanation about who is youth. And uh, I will close my hand to give my opinion instead of giving uh, uh, legal, legal, legal definitions according to different authorities, institutions, uh, as provided in our national context, regional context, and uh, international context. And let's get further from uh, international context. When we, uh, we revisit the United Nations Organization's document, uh, United Nations defines or consider a person who is youth, uh, who, who is youth, is a person between uh, uh, 15 years to 24. 15 years to 24. But in our regional context, Africa, Africa Union, Africa Union under the Africa Union Youth Charter of 20, uh, 2006, it defines a, a youth is a person who is between the age of 15 to 35. And uh, that uh, youth charter uh, of Africa Union of, 20, of 2006 has also affected our, uh, our national uh, youth our national youth policy of 1996, which has been repealed and enacted the new uh, national, uh, national youth policy of 2007, which adopted the Africa Union definition that in Tanzania, a person who is considered to be a youth is a person between the age of 15 to 35. So simply saying, a person who is a youth is a person between the age of 15 to 35. But also, uh, I can give you further elaboration and explanation that Africa Union didn't or, have, or has, not, uh, uh, has not barred any state to give its own definition, but it has given the regional definition. Uh, it has allowed the nation to define uh, the terminology and, the, and such population of youth according to its context. That's why when you are going to Mali, youth is a person between the age of 10 to 35, not between the age of 15, as it has been said by the Africa Union, okay? So we have contextual definitions, but we have those regional definitions, but also we have programmatic definition. When you conduct a program and you are saying that I wanted to engage youth, you can also have the right to define. When I'm saying youth, I mean person between 12 years old to 30. And that is also allowed, as matter as uh, issue of community development are concerned. Okay, so 
you can take that. So when you want authoritative definition, is a person between the age of 15 to 35. But you can go further to show the teacher or to show a person that who asked you that you know better and saying all those other things. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. As uh, for uh, introduced by the um, uh, presiding judge, my name is Eric McLeod. I'm from proposing side. We do support the motion because, um, dear brothers and sisters, at the matter of law, there is the Latin maxim which states, res ipsa locuta. The matter in question um, is the something that speaks itself. Uh, so, the issue that uh, youth have minimal role in human rights pro uh, promotion and protection is clear. And uh, if at least uh, could be under my capacity, um, uh, I would like to see at least all people we support the motion, not opposing the motion, because it is very clear. So, supporting the, the motion, I, together with my fellow team, we have six points, and uh, I myself, I'll be explaining uh, on two points. Number one is less reaction of youth to the human right violation incident. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, I would like to take you through the human right, legal and human rights center report of 2017, 2019, and 2020. There were a lot of human rights violation incidents that infringed the several rights, including right to life, uh, freedom of expression, freedom of movement. Um, if you will uh, allow me, I'll mention some of them. There are the incident reported about the abduction of people, killing of people, uh, burning of uh, medias. But my question uh, about the another side uh, that opposing the motion that youth uh, is not true that youth have the minimal role is that where are, are, are the youth where all this incident happening? We all know that we have the right to question the government because it's the organ that we have entrusted with power to protect our rights. But when you go far and look the reaction of the youth towards this incident, you'll find that there are very, very, very few people who managed to respond and to react to the government and to question, why do these things happen? Why our rights have been violated? Very, very few. But number two, is less participation in human rights activities like uh, human rights clubs and uh, human rights uh, international days and uh, uh, another things that like to that. So, uh, dear brothers and sister, as you can see inside here, this university has got uh, almost uh, 17,000 students. We have something like this. It's all about human rights promotion and protection. But look at this number. I also li uh, would like to remind you that Tanzania population uh, as today is almost 64 million. And within that, uh, that 64 million, 64% of that population are youth. So you can see we have a lot of power to uh, keep or to make the government responsible to ensure that the right of our people, of our fellow uh, brothers and sisters, of our mothers, of our grands are being protected. But our voice is silent. Our efforts are not seen. So to my side, um, uh, I would like to uh, conclude uh, by saying that it's true and the matter in question, it is not disputed. We should not dispute the matter because it is very, very, very clear even the number inside here don't lie. There are some of people who say that uh, women lie, men lie, but number don't lie. My dear brothers and sisters, number don't lie. Look, as inside here, compare with the number 
uh, of students that we have in our university. Look at uh, the Tanzania, the entire Tanzania population, 64 million of people. 64% of that population are youth, but we have failed to promote and to protect human rights. Thank you. Legal and Human Rights Center and Majority. Long live South Human Rights Club. Long live. Thank you. First of all, my name is Providence Simbila. I'm here to, pro, uh, to oppose the motion. And first of all, uh, I beg to differ from my fellow council and possibly all others coming councils from proposing side because I don't catch uh, 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 their, their, their intention. Uh, first of all, I, I wish I can say that uh, I am youth and you are too. So we have to open our mind, we have to open our mind to agree and to excavate that we have a great role upon uh, promotion and protection of the human right. And, and then I wish uh, to analyze and to elaborate a simple definition of the term role. I can say a role is like a character to perform something or a function. Youth in Tanzania have been given such a uh, character. Youth in Tanzania have, have been given such a uh, role, such function. Uh, and some of them uh, youth is, and many of them does. And many of them use that character to protect and to supervise and to promote the human right. And also to back up uh, my argument, I wish to provide the following point. The first thing is uh, the role of medias and social network platforms. Social medias, uh, they play a great role in uh, investigation and reporting the human rights issues uh, and provide more airtime concerning the human rights related programs. And if you make an assessment, if you make a clear assessment, you will find that those social medias to whom uh, are they talking about human rights activities, they are ruled over by the youth. And I can give an example. The first example is uh, uh, one social media platform called uh, Shulea Wongozi by Humphrey Polipoli. He is youth. It also is, there is Wanawake Life by uh, Joyce Kiria. He is youth. Malumbano Yahoja by Juma Kapalato. He is youth. Medani Zasiasa by Edwin Chief Odemba, he is youth. Frola Shaw, he is youth. Women Matters by Lilian Mwasha, he is youth. And also there is a Jami Forum by Maxence Melo, he is youth. Those are few to mention. So the role of mass medias in protecting and promoting uh, the human right is very, very, very active. And also, we can agree on each other that if you make uh, an assessment even on legal and the human rights center itself, uh, the most human rights youth activities or human rights activities are done by the youth, and they, are, and they are ruled over by the youth. So we can agree that not only mass medias, but only even non-government organization, they are ruled over by the youth. Another thing I can provide here is the implementation of the right to vote and be voted. For the critical assessment, youth is, uh, are the only person who vote in higher percent. And they are big in number, and those who vote and other they use uh, to contest for the governmental positions. And also we uh, can find that uh, governmental officials for this time, many of them are the youth. So they know their right, they promote their right, they fight for their right. Another thing, uh, another thing I wish uh, to provide is, uh, another point is uh, youth takes legal actions against the discrimination and human rights violation. We have to agree on each other that uh, youth is uh, it is a biological active time. Nobody doubt on it. And we have to agree that youth, it is uh, the stage of, uh, we, can, we can call it uh, the urgent 
the proper agents of change, even in social things, even in economic things, even in human rights activities. So it does not come in mind if someone say, uh, use, plays such a very minimal role. So we can question ourselves that who then plays that vital role? Elders? Does it come in mind? My name is Ikala Fenki from Proposal Sites. I'm flabbergasted when I heard my co-counsel opposing the motions. There is no freak of doubt that youth have a minimal role in human right protection and promotion in Tanzania. This is evidenced when the youth does not take legal or any actions towards violation of human rights. So before, before I quantify anything, let's look what is the meaning of protection and promotions. When we say protections, we mean enactment of laws, enforcement mechanisms, providing of punishment for wrongdoers, and provide remedies. This is what is called protection. And promotions is just to make, to make awareness to the individual to recognize that there is human rights, to awake people socially, economically, and politically so that they can understand and know their rights. Therefore, let's look at the role of, of use towards those two, protection and the promotion of human rights. Although, Ipsis Mavebe, at Kosata Sub-3 of the Consulate of the United Republic of Tanzania, provides the right for any person who is right, is likely, or is being violated to knock the door of language justice for determination. This language justice is high courts. So we have a minimum number of youths who instituted the matter before the high court in concerning violation of human rights. We have at least the Chacha Wangwe, Jebla Kambole, those two or three peoples are evidence that tells that we are youth are minimal. Therefore, there is no need to oppose the motions. Secondly, we lack so called so called we have a less powerful youth human rights movements. We as the youth, we should have uh, human rights uh, activist movements. Let's take an example. Article 8 of the Constitution of the United Republic of Tanzania of 1977 provides the right to exp expression or freedom of expression. But when you visit Section 25 of the Newspaper Act, 25 of the Newspaper Act, 25 of the Newspaper Act, provide the power to the minister to manage the newspaper for the public interest. Up to the moment, there is no clear definition of what is the public interest. This. Uh, this make a contradiction with which is public interest and for whom one you are burning newspaper for the benefit of someone over the benefit of the ruler. Therefore, we don't see a number of people, eh? number of non-government organizations that are established by youth to fight against the violation of human rights. There is no. Therefore, there is no need to oppose the motion. Therefore, in the upshot, in upshot, 
in upshot, there is a need for the youth to come together, to unite together, so that we can, we can protect, promote human rights for the betterment of Tanzania and the betterment of youth, youth of Tanzania, or future youth of Tanzania, and for betterment of our Tanzania. Thank you. Well, good morning. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Hamis Ahmad Juma. I'm from opposing side to the motion who state, which state that youth have a minimal role in human rights promotion and a protection in Tanzania. First of all, I would like to make some quotation from magnificent and prominent professor Pro, Professor Lumumba once said that there is a big problem in Africa. Those with power have no idea, and those with idea have no power. And again, in connection to, the, to our motion today, my co-counsel brother here have spoken about promotion and protection of human rights. If we do not agree that youth have a big role in promotion and protection of human rights, who then have? Elders, it is us, youth. In the aspect of promotion and protection, promotion per se, one of the major ways to protect and promote human rights is to speak out about what you care. So if you don't speak about, about what you care, means you are totally this value, the protection and promotion of human rights. As a youth, for instance, me, I'm a co-founder of an organization called Tanzania Legal Race Organization. It's an organization, we, we formed it with my co-brothers, Mr. James. That organization, per se, one of the major duty is to raise awareness to the society, is to teach people about their rights, is to teach people about in what ways, what modality, what platform. Specifically, my bro, he cites Article 30, sub Article 3 of our Constitution of the United Republic of Tanzania, which provide for the forum. When human right, when your right is likely to be infringed or is infringed per se, you have to knock the door of the court. So what are you going to tell people in Nachingwea village there about in what ways to knock the, the door of the court. It is for our youth. We have to speak out, out for what we care. That's number one. And again, he failed to understand the meaning of public interest litigation. Then it is not vital fact that we are all lawyers. Most, very few of us are not lawyers. And we believe in landmark case, precedent. Mr. Ali, I hope you understand. There is a case, CIS Enterprises and Attorney General. That case defines what about public interest litigation means. And one of the criteria, public interest litigation must involve the benefit of the community. There should be benefit of community. So now I so wonder when my brother come here and say we as youth, we have a minimal number in promotion and protection of human rights. May I make some point here that youth, human rights meeting and gathering. That's my number one point. Youth, human rights meeting and gathering. As you have seen here, this is one of the human rights gathering and meeting. We are here discussing about the ways in which we can promote and protect human rights. So I'm so wondering, Mr. Uh, my co-counsel here, he come here to say he cannot distinguish the real definition of promotion and protection and he is the youth. But again, but again, he also say about there is no any legal action taken by youth to promote and protect human rights per se.
As I said again, youth are the fruitful future of tomorrow's generation. If you are not, if you are not able today to speak about what you care, as I've said, then is, as I said, it is, it, is, it is for those who have power, have no ideas, then do you think the problem of having people who don't, two minutes, two minutes, may I beg? One minute. If I make some conclusions about what I've said, that in Africa those who have power have no idea, and those with idea have no power, if we continue to call, if we continue to have youth like, like those who, pro, who propose this motion, the problem of violation of human right in Africa per se will never come to an end. So as brothers and sisters, I would like to introduce you, you have to read, you have to read about promotion and protection of human rights so as can be fruitful in future generation, you have to plant ideas, you have to plant knowledge to the generation, generation, and per se. Thank you so much. Honorable judges, open and side and as a floor. Good morning. Um, Helman Liamba, based on the proposing side. Before continuing, I would, I would like to say that when I was on my chair, I was just vibrating. It was really hurting. When I see the open side, and not only the open side, but the land blazers, still just sharing the idea on the perception. But here we are not discussing on the matter of perception, but we are just talking on the reality. Meaning that he said that in 2019, during the local government election, the youth participation was fully, that is, there was no participation. But maybe there is a, there is a problem on the meaning how youth have minimum participation. During that election, the opponent, opponent political parties, standouts, were banned, and the only CCM, CCM was erected, but there was no the involvement of uses for such violation. That is the real meaning of the meaning rule of use in the human rights promotion and protection. Maybe it is better for judges to say that Maybe they have to get, to get out and discuss again and then come back again to tell us what, it was, what was their meaning on that. On top of that, I would like to go direct to my points. That the first one is political manipulation and the patriotism with long interpretation is just is another point that makes the minimum participation of use to be like that, meaning that I said that we are not talking on perception. We have to speak on the realities. Nowadays, if it was for the conference for CCM, I'm sure this room was, in, was not enough. But think about now, it is for human rights conference or a debate. Our university have more than 10, 100,000 students. And the others today, no, 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 no classes. For instance, my class I'm earlier before, we are more than 500. But when you, when you count here, the numbers are very few. But when we go, we go far, further on the, on the patriotism with long interpretation, think about the issue of Mizengo Pinda, Wapigwe too. It is okay that there were you see, who voice us, but maybe it was only maybe silly advocacy or few, few, few movements who go to who got to the court for the petition. Yes, the youth participated. Think about five people for the country of 64% of youth for the population. Do you think that is not only a minimum, it is negligible to it, and that is what we are talking here. Another point is that the intimidation, this is a problem also that makes youth to still be minimal. On the arbitrary of arrest of human rights activists, Abduction, for example, the Ben Sanan, even today, our nation, our readers, as ourselves, we don't know where the man is. That was the assistance of Freeman Boy. 
Also, there is a man he called Mr. Lafferi Ogangi. That was by then was a secretary for Mr. Zito Kabwe. After the, after the long, after the long communication, because this man is not a Tanzania, he's a K K Kenya person. After the country voice up, the money was revealed out in Mombasa by that time. I was a man, I was among of the youth, that minimum, in voicing up through social media. But was it surprised me? When I was voicing, they only were elders. For example, in, 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 two, month, in two last months, I was among of the people who, who joined the conference conducted by General Mwengu and the Ask of Bagonza. I just want to quote the, the human rights activist, Mr. General Mwengu, said that, Ukritimba wa vyama vya siyasa umeharibu vijana, population ya vijana wengi pamoja na wananchi kiujumla na ndio maana sasa hivi wanaotetea haki za binadamu ni, ni wachache right ingekuwa tungekuwa wengi hata wale tunaowapigia kelele wangekuwa wanaogopa but the problems those who are voicing up they are still few may I have two minutes to finish up okay what i want to conclude is, is on the is on the report of human rights center documented on the page number 27 that the, the abduction, arbitrariness of, of human rights activists have been cemented there. Also, the TIFPA Association have re reported a, a, a report in 2016 showing the issue of that. Ma, ma, I would like to end that. The issue of open inside is starting to share about perception. We are not talking about perception, we have to seek on the reality. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you, judges and directors. My name is James Moses Masal, and I'm with my side, who we're opposing the motion. Uh, I would like to, to proceed, and I want to, to start with, with uh, let's start with a platform and organization. And in here, I want to talk about aspiration. As we know, aspirations, it's play a, a, a vital role uh, in shaping youth, especially when it comes to decision making. We can all agree on that. Uh, there are different youth programs and platforms that have been formed, for, for, for example, my, my co-counsel has said we have this Tanzania Legal Race Organization. It was just been formed by the students, they are youth. And what the aim of this organization is to help the society, to help the youth to understand the importance of human rights. It's the youth, youth who are doing this. Uh, we, we, we can all agree that child, childhood uh, is a recognized window for shaping uh, and uh, creating a well future generation. So if we youth, we take the opportunity and we use this opportunity we have right now as we are using it and we will be using it. We will create a good future in promotion, promoting and protecting the human rights. Uh, I would like to say one thing. It's, as we, we, we can all agree that youth is a nexus between childhood and adult. So it's youth that can pres preserve human rights for the generation and implant the importance of value of human rights in the people's heart, in the society. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit shaked by my counsel. I, I, I was not understanding if he was agreeing or disagreeing with, with the motion. 
as he was giving examples of youth who, who, who have been f f fast forwarding to, to, to protect and promoting, and he was an example of it. He was attending different occasions that was prepared for this kind of protection and promotion of human rights. So we can agree that it's youth. And as a council, I heard him talking about the number of people in here. I would like to correct him. The number here is because other students, other youth have other, people, uh, other classes to attend. But if they were free, they could all be here. I'm sure of that. Thank you so much. The first two competing teams. We have heard of the arguments of their points, both sides opposing the motion and of course those supporting the motion. Now let's have three minutes exchange as I call upon the other two teams, but I'm aware, let me put this clear as the question of gender balance. You can see the first two teams be made up of the gents. It's very unfortunate that we had the ladies as well, but all morning today, they communicated the excuse to me, very strong excuse, and we had no way out. That's why you can see imbalanced agenda right now. And of course, we are missing one presenter of one team, who is also a lady, Miss Rose. Rose could have been here, but is one of the participants who communicate their excuse. But also we had Esther, remember? But at least I can see uh, Jasmine. Now, can we have any lady who can step on the shoes of Rose. Any lady who is ready, you see, the topic is very clear. It's about human rights promotion and protection. If there is a lady who can step in the shoes of Rose, okay, zero points presented from your table. Welcome. Opportunity. Uh, I would like to clarify some points and uh, to make some destructive point uh, from the opposing sides. Uh, in respect of the point uh, in the right to vote and to be voted, uh, I would like to remind my fellow land brother that uh, I was a man of the representative um, who joined or participated in that election 2019 um, uh, and 2020. But in real sense, when you go through the report of Legal and Human Rights Center 2020, reveal that a lot of election irregularities, um, representative from opposition parties we are, are denied um, from participating in the election, and the leading part today is um, declared to win on the 100%. So, when you go into the statistics, statistics tell us that uh, most of youth uh, believe in uh, opposition parties. So despite that fact, youth failed to take action to make the government responsible and the election committee in respect of that matter. If that's not enough, the general election of 2020, uh, it happened the same. Um, a lot of uh, irregularities are reported in the uh, Legal and Human Rights Center. But another thing, uh, the opposition side uh, say that uh, Keep mentioned a very few people who form the organizations. Uh, keep talking about the very minimal number of people who seem to be front to promote and protect human rights. And this. Uh, uh, and this fall on the, the meaning, 
the actual meaning of youth have a minimal role in human rights protection because we cannot confidently stand here and speak that uh, youth have the maximum or vital role in human rights protection while we are 64% of the entire Tanzania population and mentioned a very uh, very few numbered people like, uh, let's say, Chacha Wangwe, Jebra Kambol, who managed to file. That is the very, very, very few people that fall within the, uh, the meaning of the minimal role of human right, uh, of youth in human rights protection and promotion. Thank you. Uh, we need to clarify and uh, to make a, a simple re-examination re on the following. As I said, the problem is not uh, the role that we have been given. The problem is realization of those roles. I wanted to do this. When you read uh, the Constitution, Article 12 to Article 24 provides uh, the right that we supposed to have. And if I can mention the right to life, the right to personal freedom, the, uh, the right to uh, privacy and personal security, the right to freedom of movement, the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion, the freedom of association, the freedom to participate in public affairs, and so others. So the problem is not that we have not been given, uh, we have not been given those roles. We have been given roles. We have been uh, vested the character to open up the case. We have been given the platforms. But the problem is realization of those roles. What I mean about the realization? Realization means uh, achievement of something, fulfillment of something, accomplishment or an attainment. My brother, you're supposed to open up a case within 30 days from the day of announcement of the election result. Okay? So if you were not satisfied, you're supposed to open the case in accordance to uh, Article 30, sub-Article 3, and not just claiming and not just blaming on us because we have been given a role, but in Tanzania, what is disturbing us is not about the role. The role has been pronounced, the role has been stated, but the problem is how to realize those roles. That is the problem. Thank you so much. And another thing I wish to say that protection can be done even uh, by uh, a single person or the community, but not only uh, the state. My brother here said that the, uh, the protection Thank you. The protection can be only done by the state. That is totally want to direct that in, 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 in wrong track because protection, according to uh, Tanzania Human Rights Report in uh, 2018, drafted by the Legal and Human Rights Center at page uh, 36 in Roman number, provide some criteria in protection of human rights uh, in, in regarding to the vulnerable groups. And if I can paraphrase that, uh, it says, community members to perform their duties of protection and safeguarding children's rights, refraining from conducting act, acts of abusing to children. And also, the, also stated, under international, regional, and domestic law, states are charged with primary responsibility of promoting, protection, promoting and protecting human rights and are required to refrain from interfering with them arbitrarily. This responsibility extended to individual groups and organs in the society. So not only state actors, non-state actors and NGOs can protect. Thank you. Two competing teams. We have Team Embe, please, Team Embe, stand up. Where could you be? And of course, we have Team Chungwa. Team Chungwa, yes. Team Chungwa, let us now identify the individuals by names. Kapwani Kavenuke, please stand up, wave to the occasion. Gift Oliver, please wave to the occasion. And uh, Benjamin Loita. Those are the three team making. And of course, the MB team are supporting the motion, right? Yes, you are supporting the motion. Good morning, everyone. My name is Akapwani Jasmine Kavenuke. Uh, first of all, just to welcome you all to this event and to welcome our guest of honors, the Legal and Human Rights Center. Welcome to the Human Rights Saudi Club. 
and hopefully after today we shall have many, many, many new members. So we're looking forward to that. Um, the theme for this year's uh, debate is, as you can see, youth have minimal role in human rights promotion and protection in Tanzania. So as you can see, many of us here are youths and the, the topic is really interesting. We're hoping that we'll get different views from the audience as well. So basically, we just want to know whether, as you can see, they're proposing and opposing sides. Proposers are saying, yes, they do have a minimal role in human rights promotion and protection in Tanzania, whilst the opposers are saying, no, they do not have a minimal role in human rights promotion and protection in Tanzania, and their points shall be explained herein after. So this is the theme, and of course, it's interesting to know who exactly are youths, and I would have liked our guest of honor to give at least an explanation of who exactly the League of Human Rights Center, who do they see as youths. So thank you so much. We hope you enjoy. I'll leave it up to the guest of honor to continue and Mr. Shkru will continue from there. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, and the judge, judge. Yes, my name is Riverson Livingston Samson, uh, opposer of the motion First of all, when I was seated on my chair, I've got some, some sort of pain due to the word minimal. Remember, all of us here, we are youth. First of all, we are, de we are, we are defamed because of this word minimal. How can you agree that youth we have a minimal role in human rights protection in Tanzania? How? Yes, I will start by the following that youth have no minimal, but they have critical and high, high protection and promotion of human rights in Tanzania. How? Because up to date, youth have stayed currently connected with the social movements. How? Today, there are many social movements which are conducted by youths. Now, those social movements do encourage. Today, we have LOHRC. This is one of the social movements which is being instituted by youths. We have a Mr. here, it's the youth. So, through this institution, other youths are being encouraged to join and engage to give further information on the protection and the promote human rights in Tanzania. The other thing is, up to date, youths are the source of the renewal and the refreshment to maintain the current uh, status of the society. How? The current status of the society is being led by the big number of the youth. How? In the political areas, we see the big number of people who are participating in the political areas are youths. In economic areas, in nowadays Tanzania, we have this kind of matching guys. Well, we call them matching and swahiri. Those people are youths, mostly are youths. Now, those people are the ones who participate in economic participations. This means that bring out the refreshment and the renewal of economic status of the current uh, society. Then, Another thing, we have readership. Readership, we have people like Humphrey Porepole, Shure Awongoz. This man is the youth. So through this man, other youths are being encouraged, are being encouraged to join, to renew their society in order to promote and protect their, uh, to protect human rights in Tanzania. So this shows that Tanzania youths have no minimal role, have no minimal role. How? They have big role due to these views which I've given to you. But one of the things that make a uses, uses uh, to be a minimal in Tanzania is a fright. A fright is one of the things that make uses to be minimal. Now, in order to go against the fright, it's being clear on this views which I've given out is about renewal and refreshment to maintain the current status of the society which we have today. 
The other thing is, is that youth is at the source of volunteering and donating the internal organizations. We have many internal organizations which are being donated by youths. This means that, uh, as before I've mentioned, H uh, L O H R C is one of the internal donator. Here today we are here. They are here. Donating it does not mean money. It does not mean gift. Donating means even uh, giving knowledge to the society or to the youth who are around within the area. Now, this is donating. What they are doing today is donating. And who are donating? Are youths. That's what we have to keep in mind. So youths do donate and give uh, power others to volunteer so that to maintain, promote, and protect human rights in Tanzania. Thank you very much. First of all, I will conclude by saying that Youths are very important in Tanzania. Although you are sitting here, there are many things which can hinder you, but youths have a big role because are the one who have power, are the one who are nourished, are the one who have the power of empowerment to control each and everything. Thank you. Side, my fellow council, plus the floor. Good afternoon. Well, my name is Arujifti Oliver Jeremiah Mnyangali. I am from the proposing side, and straight to the motion which states that youth have minimal role in human rights promotion and protection. Um, as to our side, we decided first to categorize from the protection and promotion. My fellow council spoke about promotion, so I am here to elaborate more to you concerning protection. How does youth protect human rights? And first of all, I would like to lecture in here. First of all, we need to understand what does motion speaks. The motion wants us to know that the youth has minimal role on promotion and protection of human rights. It does not say that we don't have role. We play, but in a minimal sense. And this, is, this can be proved here. My fellow council was here in trying to say that uh, the LOHC, uh, LOHRC are here and we are here. So we promote and we protect here. Now, this is the only thing that he is trying to prove to us that we are here, but this is not the number. People came from Dar es Salaam just to make sure that they are raising awareness to youth on matters of protection and promotion of human rights. But the response is, is this the number that people are supposing to be here? The announcement went all over the social networks to youth in classes, so as we may participate. But how many are we here? This proves that we have minimal response on that. He also said about the organizations which are out there led by youth. Now I tell you one thing. If you post a link concerning any matters that related to promotion and protection of human rights, the response will be very few unless if you post any link concerning any matters on social networks, Perhaps Nandi did what, Diamond is doing what, or Jux is doing what, the response will be higher than if you post that thing. This proves that youth have minimal participation or minimal role on human rights protection and promotion. I think I'm clear. So, when we want to analyze on the role of youth in protection and promotion of human rights, we first need to check on the, the state, because it states about Tanzania. What are we going to start? We should start from the state itself. The organization of the states, the state's organs are from executive, legislature, and judiciary. This goes straight from the root, the grassroots of the, gov the, the society is from the family. From there, how were we raised? How does the state treat youth? Are we prepared to protect and to promote human rights? from there, because we, you cannot learn it from nowhere. We believe that family is the first institution that treats you how to behave in future. And from there is where we get youth who are very unethical. Believe, the state has trusted us and given us different powers. We have seen leaders who were trusted to be in different positions, but what did they do? We elected some different leaders into the parliament. Do they speak about promotion of human rights and protection of it? Are they participating? Do they raise their voice on matters of protection and promotion of human rights? They do not. And we are witness that we have seen a young man who was a leader, Sabaya. Sabaya was a youth. The government trusted and elected him to be a leader in a certain district, right? But what he did? The court is the only institution that can say one is guilt or not. And the court proved to us that Sabaya is guilt and is a youth. It's a young man who was given a big power. What did he do? 
he made people not to trust us. So the only thing is, we are given power. We have chance, we are aware, but are we ready? So readiness of youth is one among the role, is one among the reason as to why we are not there. So we are proving that we have minimal role on human rights protection and promotion of human rights. We are here. And apart from that, let's focus on the cruelty of the government itself. A lot of police are youth. Personally, I had never met an old man who is a police. Most of them were youth. But how do they treat us? Whoever stands and speaks about human rights matters, what happens to them? Right here, perhaps your right has been violated, and you want to say, oh, a certain group of people have been harassed. You want to step and say about them. What happens to you? Will the state leave you? So the state agents are there to respond on the orders. As, as youth, do you have to respond on orders? You take one is life just because you have been ordered to do so. So we need revolution. What I want to tell you is, saying no to the motion that youth have a full participation or have full rule in human rights promotion and protection is pretending that you have something that you don't have. So we should be true, we should be real that we don't have this. So we should sit and discuss, what do we do? How are we going to make revolution on that? If we stick to support those people who are saying that we have rule, we have rule, that means we are demonizing our role into this state. And youth are the only current state. We are not the future ones. We are the current state. What do we have to do? We have to stand and say, this is no. We don't have this, we have that, we have to do. Thank you. OK, my name is Diana Samuel from the opposing side. And by starting, I would like to quash a little bit to my former presenter. She said the, about the number of the participants who came to participate in these situations, okay? When you talk about the human rights, it's not all about the numbers. Yes, you are, you are capable of coming here, but others are there still fighting for the human rights, fighting for the rights of the youth and whatever. But when, by looking to my point, I'm setting the first point basing on participation. Participation on what? When you look to the circumstances and the format starting from back then and now, the participation is growing. Back then, youth were not. Even we could say that we have the human rights circumstances which it's appearing right now. They couldn't even appear with one of them. But for, for this time and here, we see a lot of people. This is a big number. We are saying it's, it's not like in, it's a very big number, as you've seen it, when you compare it to the past and now. And when you look to, for example, Saudi participation, the people who are taking the human rights codes, for example, 2017 to 2018, the number of students were 700. Is that the number? Is that a small number? No, it's large compared to the past. This number is large and it's still growing. When you look to 2019 to 2020, the number still growing is 1,200. Is that small? No. It's not looking just participant, participant which are coming here. No, people are fighting for the youth. People are still fighting. It's not a mouth here. People at the Doma, Morogoro, wherever, the rest of them, people are fighting for the youth. Okay? When the second point is speaking out, speaking out on what ways, speaking out on cultural beliefs, speaking out on traditional foods, speaking out on men participations and men, what, FICRA, I think. Sorry for this language, but at first, women are not supposed to be at the family talking and making decisions, but right now, things are changing. People are speaking out, youth are speaking out. You yourself are speaking out at your families. You're the good examples, you're speaking out. But in the past, you're not capable of studying and saying, Dad, Mom, I want this and this, I want to study. You're not capable of doing that. But still, you're not saying about youth is, is have minimal role. We have, the, we have the right, we have the capacity of speaking out. But, and the declaration is still saying that we have the, the point, we have the right, we have, we have the high quality of speaking out. But us, the problem is us. Are we taking that serious? Do you respect the articles? Do you do you, I don't know how to say it, but are you making it clear? Like, the creation are giving you points, are giving you the, 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 the opportunity of you speaking out. Are you taking it that serious? Are you standing for yourself? It's not standing for others. You are the youth. Are you standing for yourself? That's the question to ask. It's not saying you have the minimal role. No, you have the biggest one. 
are you standing for that role? That's the question to ask yourself. It's not just saying we have the minimum, we have the what, the declaration, the articles, the rights are there for you. Are you standing for them? Can I ask, are you standing for them? That is no. The answer is no, and there will always be no. You have to change and fight for your right and not say just the youth will have the minimal wherever and wherever. No, that's, no, that's, the, that's not the point. The point is, are you standing for that right which you are given with the constitution, with the rights, the declaration, or wherever they're saying? By saying at the last point, this thing, it will might bring you up. Re listen carefully. Stereotyping youth as immature, insubordinate, irresponsible, incapable for real commitment. That's my real point. We are growing up from the families which are saying like, for example, in, in Chekatu, someone said like, Mimi natoka nyumbani, naambiwa na mzazi, ukienda uko maofisini, usinini, usijifanya unajua sana. No, lakini ukifika kule una, unaanza kusasa kujifanya ile fact kwamba sijui sana ili wale wakubwa wa kunini wa kuwapelekeza lakini that's not, that's not the point you have the knowledge go to the office use the knowledge our parents the teachers like you have to do okay one minute i'm concluding this youth we are the future parents we are the future change the ideology that you have. Use the role. Don't speak about the minimal role. You have the role, and it's, it's in the high quality. Use it, my friends. Thank you. My fellow student, my name is Benjamin. Before I start, I start by critics. Uh, the first speaker, I post the question by criticizing him that he, he have not tell us why youth do not realize its role of promotion and protection of human rights. But the second speaker, he stand and support us, support our, our motion. From the first, he started to speak up to the last. Uh, I'm going to begin to support our motion. That state, youth have minimal role in promotion and protection of human rights. Uh, I'm going to state various of point and grounds but for a minute of time, I will use only one ground. That is unemployment. Uh, most of Tanzanian youth are unemployed. Because of unemployment, those youth are engaged in different activity that they can do to get their life. Some of those activity are activities which endangers their life and violate human rights. Some of them are like rob robbery, murder, some people, theft, and even rape for satisfaction of their body. But we can see a lot of violation of human rights from, from, from unemployed persons. Let us come to our university. Uh, recent time, I happened to visit one of our students who is called uh, Naishoki. He prepared a program which called Niweseshe Niweze Kusoma. Uh, that program, few, few students were there to support him. A lot of them, they are not there. That tells me if it was a festival called Wasafi Festival or even Mario Festival, a lot of students will go because a lot of students love entertainment. So that makes a role, a minimal role of protection and promotion of human rights. In my conclusion, I can go and say that, uh, I can go and say that, let us not be blindsided. Youth have minimal role in protection and promotion of human rights. We see various media, like Wasafi Media um, and Klaus Media. Wasafi Media create women, you say, super women for entrepreneurship, women. And Klaus TV create something called Kipepeo for entrepreneurship women. But that all support few or very minimal number of people for human rights protection. Therefore, 
I am part of it. I fear to be part of it because I want to be a part of it. In, promotion and, in protection and promotion of human rights in Tanzania, it is start with you youth who you are here. Thank you very much. Presiding judges, motion movers, member of the floor, good afternoon. My name is Raban Abbas Mapawa. I'm here to oppose the said motion. But before jotting down to the points, I would like to make some uh, distractions from the supporting side. Supporting side always have been coming here saying that youth has minimal role. Back from our judges and motion movers, they have not clearly defined the minimum, the degree of minimum of youth participation in promoting and protecting of human rights. As long as there is no a degree which has been imposed in our motion, you have no legal stand to come here and saying that youth have minimal role. So I, 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 was right, uh, I would like to make it clear. So again, here we are just talking about all four faces of human rights, meaning that first face, which is incorporated in the ICSPR and the other economic and cultural rights, uh, the economics and the other uh, corrective rights. So coming here and just pronouncing only political rights, is that make, it does not make a sense. We are talking about general. People coming here just arguing on political rights. People have been abducted, whatever. Young are there struggling for other different rights. Economic rights, uh, civil rights, cultural rights are there fighting for that. So coming here saying on political rights does not make the sense. Let me go direct to what I have prepared. Uh, the last censor uh, conducted by our National Bureau of Statistics of 2013 uh, outcreated that youth encounter 35%. But it was wrong. Coming far, to, it is wrong. So exp est est estimation from the uh, word, word Word meter, right now we are counting about 38. So, basing on that population, meaning that the youth are major actor of any action in, this, in the country. For instance, youth have been uh, coming in front to bar the draconian law registrations. Back to 2017, the team of six uh, human rights activity, uh, activists, naming Jebra Kambore, we had, uh, we had, uh, I mean, we had Jebra Kambore. We had Furujens Masawe. We had Edwin Hans. We have, we had Francis Tora, Mparen Pok. The majority were youth. Huh? And, and uh, His Excellency General Rumweng, majority were the youth. This uh, went to court to challenge the, the, the Media Service Act number 12 of 2016, coming and articulating from, uh, from section 7, sub 3, going, going uh, up to 35, I think, of the act. Those provisions were contravening Article 18 of the Constitution. So, uh, it, it also, they were, uh, the, the, there have been the movement of youth challenging the Cyber Crime Act of 2015, uh, reading under Section 20 of the Act, saying that when the police is just arresting you, uh, and you, then you pre guilt uh, a police has a mandate to give you a pun any punishment that he would wish. 
So they were just saying, uh, there is different modes of pre-guilt. Someone can pre-guilt by use of arbitral uh, brutality. So they were ch challenging that. So we have so uh, different movements. Coming to the second point. Yes, give me at least to you. Youth conde co condemn human rights compared to other groups. Uh, we look on the report of the United Nations of 2017, eh, accounting that 80% uh, of the youth are through social medias. So we have different platform, not going to court only. We have different platform, going to the social medias. Take an example. Uh, we had uh, the other doctor from Arusha who, who, who broke in the, the patient for not failure to pay the operational costs. People were just lamenting on the media and the, the, through medias for that percent of youth. Uh, government officials have taken steps. Eh? Coming to Tozo, it was the group of youth who come to, uh, to, 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 to say no. And they come, the government went back to amend the, 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 the what? The legislation. Uh, coming to the posting police br br uh, uh, brutality. It is uh, an effort of you, youth. So by ending, by concluding, I would like to say that youth is a fruitful future of the country, and the emerging youth leaders are also the property of youth. Thus, human rights are simply the voice of youth, strength of youth, and dream of youth. Thank you. Wow. If you wish for peace, prepare for war. Didn't expect this. What a battle. <laughs> Thank you so much, the difficulty of being a judge. So now I'm giving you two minutes to make a summary of your arguments, both sides. So one representative, this time we start this direction. You stand two minutes, make sure it's two minutes. Then this side will come. Thereafter, we'll ask you to go outside so we can add our points for like five minutes, then you'll be in. In fact, the modality has changed. Remember, previously, it was that to identify the best two teams. But now the fact is, all four teams are the best as for our observation here. And for that matter, <laughs> And for that matter, having concluded your points, we'll ask you to go outside for no more than five minutes. We add our points here, then we'll ask you to get inside and the best debaters, the best debaters will be pronounced by Samatitu. Thank you so much. Now, welcome, decide to make your point. In a brief illustration, I would like to to say that it is not the matter of the states to give self-esteem of the youth to participate in promoting and protections of human rights. We are, youth are not going to wait for the, for the government to provide for this. Even in a hard times, youth have been uh, a frontliner uh, protecting and promoting human rights, even if there is hurdles that we face, meaning that regal, economic, and political, but we have been struggling, we have been struggling. So we are not having the mandate to say that uh, pointing the governmental authorities and wherever. So youth, majority, comparing to the other days, we are front, we are front, we are front runners to to ensure that there is a higher, higher exercise of human rights in Tanzania. That's what I can say. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, much has been said by my team and our team and concerning on this motion. And one thing that we would like to clarify is that in order to create change, you should first realize that there is a problem. Accepting that we, there is no me, youth do not participate minimally is trying to try and forget that there is no problem at all, when the problem is actually there. 
The first speaker had said that, no, we don't have a minimal role, we have a big role. We're not disagreeing with him. We do have a big role. But do youths realize this? Just a few of us do. That's why our participation in promoting is minimal and in protection. Apart from that, the second speaker, thank you so much for agreeing with us when you said that we are the ones who should stand for ourselves and we should respect articles. Yes, we should. But the number of people who are doing that are minimal. Apart from that, the third speaker had gone totally out of point. But one thing that you are right about was that we are the future fruits of this generation. And being the future, we should realize that there are problems and try and find solutions for this. Apart from that, and it's also not about waiting to be handed these opportunities by the government. We're not waiting for that. It's about being accepted that we are capable to do a number of things. And this is why we are saying that we have the ideas, but we don't have the power. Those with powers don't have the ideas. If we were just given the chance to be accepted and not being stereotyped as people who are incapable, we would have made it. So we conclude by saying that there, there are some youths who actually do have a role who participate in these things. But many of us and most of us do not. And that's why it is minimal in the aspect of reality. Therefore, with the number of things that we have said, thank you so much for listening to us. Very much indeed. The discussion was electrifying. Mm. <laughs> and basically, this goes for both sides, the proposers and the opposers. Remember, as I said earlier, that we are not here to fight over the seat to Dar es Salaam, but we are here to first understand what it is like to be a young person. Sure. To start with that young person or a youth, I think it's very important to understand who is a youth. And you can understand, or rather say, by referring the, the articles from the United Nations, but also from Tanzania, whether 15 to 18 or somewhere there. And the earlier, some of you spoke about voting. Who is or who can vote? Is it a person from 15 to 18 or 18 and above? So to have an inclusive definition of a youth is wrong. You have to first thing understand who is a youth. Only then you will be able to articulate the exactly definition which you can later connect to the topic. Failure to do though, you might be in big trouble. And that, for my observation, I have seen the contradiction, the understanding of a young person. But the second thing, it has to do with the reliable sources. In other words, we call empirical information. Some of you are speaking of statistics, but you are not referring from where. Some of you spoke of two different researchers for the locals and the international researchers, which one is right? Who is credible enough to say that, ah, oh, these statistics are the right one? In that aspect, we were not well prepared. We have to, to read and study exclusively to understand the global statistics, but also the local statistics. In fact, we have to appreciate more the local statistics because we are living here and not there. But one thing that we all need to understand is that not every youth is aware of the legal issues. Some youth, they don't know what constitution is. And why? Because most of the acts or articles are written in foreign language. They're not in Swahili. So that is a barrier. Language what? Barriers. And if you go back to that point, they may be have minimum because they don't know what is written on the books. And I was expecting this to be said, but unfortunately nobody articulated that. That was the first thing to start with. But when you present anywhere, I, apart from teaching technical studies, I also teach public speaking. She knows that. Public speaking is actually a process of a person speaking to a large audiences. To do that, the beginning of the speech is as important as the conclusion of the speech. There is something we call attention getter. The first four, five, two minutes of your presentation can speak a lot about attention of the people you're talking to. 
Sometimes when you speak, people are busy with their mobile phones, which means you're not interesting, you're not convincing, you're not persuasive. And I have seen that from some of you. You start lower, and when you finish, you go up. How do you start or create attention getter? Is by speaking on the most electrified details, shocking statistics. I was expecting, for example, somebody to provide a statistic on a particular issue from the very beginning. According to the United Nations, five billion people are unaware of what constitution is. Then you'll be like, huh? Is that really? That is attention getter. So you get people on board and they will be convinced that I have a reason to listen to what this person is supposed, is going to say. But in so doing, we get what we call ethical listener and ethical speaker. If you can get their attention, they can listen to you ethically. And you'll be in the position to be convinced and persuaded that these people are actually listening to me. And when I spoke of young people, or rather youth, we have to understand the classification of big people. Some of them are maybe well educated. Some lack education. What are the majority? So if you have statistic on the literates, that would have been also nice good. Education can determine the level of understanding of social reality. The more we educate people, the more likely we, are, we can achieve some kind of development. Of course, the term development can be debatable, but it's a progressive change from one position to another. So maybe I was expecting somebody to say, for us to be in a certain condition, we have to educate young people so that the educated one will be able to educate others and others and others, and the future generation will be an amazing generation, so to speak. So I thank you so much. And for those who will be going there, they will be projecting the ideas that we gathered here. And if you, you won, if you won, uh, that poorly. <laughs> If for any how magically won the debate, if you find somebody from the opposing side as a critical point, take it with you. Put it together to what you have. Don't go here saying that, ah, because that guy was an opposing and, and he did not win, then everything he said is wrong. That is absolutely not true. Having said so, I want this a club, right? Yes. To be an inspirational club for other people. And we spoke of the population we have on, on the platform here. So what have you done to put many people in this class? So this begins with you. You have not done enough. If you told other people, probably we could have too many people and maybe the space wouldn't have been enough. Maybe we could opt for M. M14, whatever, because we have many audiences. So it is not a club for ourselves, but it's for every young person, for every youth, for people coming out, even people, your parents. You know what I mean? Because a parent is the first person to speak with, with you. Okay, Elimisha Mama, Elimisha Yami. So you can invite Mama Zenu, Kuja Kwasikiliza. They can be proud of you. They can take what you have spoken, and they can take it home to the neighbor, show Gajilani, you know what I mean? So things like that. Having said so, I wish those who are going to Dar es Salaam, I think that this center is somewhere in Kijitonyama, right? You are right? I used to stay somewhere close. Somewhere I passed every day when I was doing my undergraduates at the University of Dar es Salaam. I was living in Kijitonyama, <laughs> and for some reason I was wondering, what are these people doing here? <laughs> And then I came to realize they provide help for those who are not privileged to get rights. Yeah. Have you done something to provide help for somebody else? No. So from now, you have to be an agent of changes. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for others. Compassion, 
love, affection, inspiration, emotion. Don't project them on yourself. Be projected so that others can see and get inspired. Thank you very much once again. And I have had a wonderful time. Listening to you guys was awesome. <laughs>